This is the second of four optional modules that share a demo edit of a student's work from a previous course. This second optional, optional module is particularly interesting because it brought up a good conversation in that previous course about an issue that we're going to be talking about in this course as well, which is plagiarism. It turned out that when I did the demo edit of this essay for the class, a couple of savvy students in the class noticed that the author of this essay had actually plagiarized a couple of lines, a couple of sentences from a press release that was written about this research. And it was actually a really good teaching moment because we got into a discussion about what is plagiarism. It's not okay to just lift lines from something that other people have written. I just want to point it out though as you're watching this demo edit so you watch out for those plagiarized instances and uh, also start thinking about how to avoid plagiarism in your own work. It's actually fairly interesting when you hear me go through the demo edit, a couple of times I'll say something like, I really like this sentence, or I really like how the author uh, you know, put this, I like this language. And it turns out that actually those are the instances uh, that the author had plagiarized from the professional writer, from the press release. So uh, I probably should have recognized that the style in those instances was actually different than the rest of the piece. Uh, I'll just to give you a few examples before you watch this demo edit, uh, the author wrote, Atten antennas serve as electronic reins, injecting small charges into the roach's neural tissue. The charges trick the roach into thinking that the antennas are in contact with a physical barrier, which effectively steers them in the opposite direction. So all of that language was lifted from the press releases. There's some other smaller instances, uses an electronic interface to remotely steer cockroaches, creates a mobile web of sensors. There's some other uh, pieces of sentences that were also lifted. It's a great teaching moment just to be aware of plagiarism and we're going to be talking more about that and how to avoid that later in this course. So now pause the video, read through the paper uh, one or two times and then restart the video and I'll walk you through the edit. So now that you've read through the paper, it's a interesting paper. It's got a cool concept here. We're uh, using cockroaches uh, as biological robots, biobots. So it's got a really nice hook uh, uh, on this paper as well. And I'm just going to go through and edit it again looking for the overall structure and also editing things um, line by line. So I'm going to go in and make a few edits here and there. I'm going to rearrange a few things. So one of the things you might have noticed is that the author has a lot of technical details about the device in the paper, and that's fine. Uh, they do a good job. I, I was able to understand everything even though there were a lot of technical details, so it wasn't bothersome to have so many technical details, but I thought maybe we could reserve one paragraph for all of the technical details. So I'm going to move things around just a little bit. Uh, to put all sort of the technical details about the device in a single paragraph. So now I'm going to go through and gonna, there's a few places I might delete a few words here and there and move a few things around. So it, in general it's reading really nicely and these are just uh, a few things to streamline it and kind of reorganize it just slightly so that the, the flow is just slightly better. So if I'm going to go through uh, the first paragraph, so scientists are still looking for small size robots. There's a few words I can edit here. So, so scientists are looking, I don't think we need the still, are looking for, and then we get uh, small size robots. I actually think uh, we don't need the word size there, right, because small implies size. So we could just say scientists are looking for small robots that can navigate in dynamic and unknown environments. And this is really nice language, dynamic and unknown environments. That's really good language and I'm actually going to add one little piece to that because at the end of this paragraph they get to this idea about survivors and earthquakes. And that's a nice little detail that really grounds the reader. You kind of see the, the how important uh, this topic is. So I added just a little bit here. Uh, I added such as the aftermath of an earthquake. I got that little thought in early and that means I'm going to be able to cut some material from the end of this paragraph so I, it's just going to streamline things a little bit. Uh, this challenge inspired these researchers from North Carolina State University to use cockroaches as biobots. I didn't change much here, I just streamlined this just slightly to turn cockroaches into biobots. Seemed like a slightly stronger verb than used. You could even probably come up with a better verb there to uh, to. Uh, transform cockroaches or something like that. 
And then we get, um, they developed a wireless biological interface that uses an electronic interface to remotely steer cockroaches. This is a little bit too wordy for the first paragraph where you're really trying to draw the reader in. And so I actually don't think we need all of this. Uh, biological interface, electronic interface are kind of vague. And they're, the reader, the author is going to give us this in the next paragraph later on. So I don't think we need all that. The, the best concept, the best wording from, from this sentence is this idea of the remotely steering the cockroaches. I thought if we could just take those couple of words, that would convey exactly what it is these researchers are trying to do. They're trying to remotely remote control cockroaches. So I don't think we need these things about the interfaces yet. We can leave that for the next paragraph. Uh, but I'm going to start the next sentence with their remotely controlled cockroaches. So that gets the concept across really fast. Immediately you know what we're talking about. We're talking about remote controlled cockroaches. We don't need to know yet how it happens, but that's the idea to make remotely controlled cockroaches. And then I like this idea of a mobile web of sensors. That's a really nice way of putting it. So I'm going to kind of just start with their remotely controlled cockroaches and go right into that idea. So their remotely controlled cockroaches could uh, someday, I think I'm going to put the word someday because it's we're not there yet. This is still preliminary. Could someday serve as a mobile web of sensors. And we don't need to repeat that uses cockroaches. So we can get rid of that. Uh, a mobile web of sensors that collect and transmit data. And we've already got the idea of earthquakes in all right here, so I'm just going to say uh, that collect and transmit data from hard to reach places. Something like that. And actually that idea of the survivors of natural disasters, that's a really compelling detail. I'm going to leave that for the end of the piece so that we have something to end on that kind of wraps it back to the beginning of the piece. So this shortens up the first paragraph just a little bit so we get right into it. We don't get too much details, but we have a good picture in our, our mind of what the researchers were trying to achieve here. Then we go into the second paragraph. Cockroaches have a, antennas. I really appreciate, by the way, that this author made a good effort to use dashes and semicolons and colons. and uh, So it's nice to see that uh, they obviously uh, watched the videos and thought uh, thought carefully about it and tried to implement some of these uh, punctuation techniques. So it always feels great for a teacher to, to see somebody putting those things into action. I'm going to change a few things. So, so like instead of dashes here, I think probably um, this is a little extra detail. So I'm going to put it in parentheses rather than dashes because maybe the reader doesn't care what the antennas are actually called. So cockroaches have antennas, two cents. Um, I, I like that sense versus two cents, but you know that's, that can sense. Um, these are all, that's a little stylistic. We actually probably uh, don't need the, the colon here. I do, again, appreciate that, that they tried to use a colon. Uh, but actually, we can just go right into, this is a very simple list. So the colon is actually not needed there. So cockroaches have antennas called Circe that can sense tactile, temperature, and humidity. And, and the one thing I'll just point out there is that there's a little bit of non-parallelism here. So temperature and humidity are nouns. Tactile is actually an adjective, so we want to make that uh, parallel by making this first item in the list a noun, so I'm going to call it tactile input. And then we get researchers, and we might as well say the particular researchers here, so I'm just going to use their last names. So those two researchers, Latif and uh, Bozkurt, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and then we get use these antennas to drive the cockroaches by sending a series of electrical pulses to it. So I thought here it would be a good place to put in um, created, the fact that they developed a device, so created a wireless device. So let's just say you're up front what they did, the, the bulk of what they did, the gist of it is they created a wireless device uh, that attaches to these antennas. So let's get that concept early on too so it's easy for the reader to picture what's going on. So these are wireless devices that actually attach the antenna. So let's get that early in the piece so that the reader has a very concrete picture of what's going on here. Um, and can deliver small electrical pulses that drive the cockroach. So this is kind of a high level summary of what their device does. I like to put the uh, the driving the electrical the electrical pulses drive the cockroach rather than putting those concepts the other way around. So that's why I'm putting the electrical pulses before the driving. I think it just works slightly better there. So we now we get kind of this high level summary. 
we get a, a wireless device that attaches to the antennas and can deliver electrical pulses that drive the cockroach. So that's really summarizing exactly what this device does. Then we're getting a lot of kind of details about the system. I'm actually going to set that those details off and make that into a, a, a new paragraph. So let's have one paragraph that has all of the technical details about the device. For the second paragraph, let's keep it to a high level summary of exactly kind of what the device does. And I really like this sentence that they have uh, down in uh, this uh, third paragraph, the charges trick the roach into thinking that the antennas are in contact with a physical barrier which effectively steers them in the opposite direction. When I read that, I finally got exactly how this device works. So I thought that detail is really important that, to have early on because it really tells the reader exactly how this thing works. So I'm going to leave the second paragraph at just that. It gives me a high level summary of what the device does and how it works. And it's an easy to read summary so the reader can immediately picture how this thing works. Then we can go into the actual details about the technical parts of the, of the summary. So uh, the system consists of, I, I like device, let's talk just about the device for the moment. So the device consists of a microprocessor with Zigbee interface, electrodes, and a battery. The user controls the microprocessor wirelessly using a Zigbee transceiver. I'm actually going to connect these two ideas. So the device consists of this, and then the user controls the device with this um, Zigbee transceiver. I don't think we need to say wirelessly again, because we already said it was a wireless device, so we don't need to repeat ourselves. I'm going to end the sentence there. Uh, the fact that the microprocessor sends electric pulses to the cockroach's antenna using electrodes and the cockroach moves, guess what, we've already said that in the second paragraph, so we don't need any of that. So now we've talked about the device itself, the microprocessor, the transceiver, the electrodes, and the battery. And so now this is a good place actually to move up something that the author had here below. The author talks about the particular microprocessor that was used in the device. So it seems to me that it would be perfect to discuss that right here. So I'm going to move that up from the third paragraph. So now as long as we're talking about the device, let's talk about the microprocessor in the device. So the researchers evaluated, I'm going to change evaluated to tested, I like that just slightly better. So tested two microprocessors. I don't think we have to say that control the electrodes, that's uh, implied, so we can just go right into they. we know there's a microprocessor, here are the two ones that they tested. And then the uh, CC2530 was better because of these reasons. I'm, I'm guessing that means that they incorporated that they tested two microprocessors, but they ended up using the CC2530. So let's say they incorporated the CC2530 in their final device due to these factors. In their final device due to its low weight, uh, its Zigbee module connectivity. Obviously, that would be important if it has to connect with the Zigbee. And, uh, and then we get to, and the availability of 21 general purpose I.O. I wasn't quite sure what that is. So I'm guessing here, I'm completely guessing here, and greater uh, number of I.O. parts. That wasn't exactly parallel either, I.O. ports maybe. So I'm, I'm picturing like uh, little electrodes here. So I'm not sure that I've got this quite right, so I'm going to highlight that so that the author can look at that and put it in uh, a way that I can understand. I don't think we need to know the details about the battery, so I'm actually going to cut that detail. So they incorporated the CC2530 in their final device due to its low weight, its Zigbee module connectivity, and the greater number of I.O. ports, because uh, they said there were 21. Uh, so I'm guessing a little bit, and hopefully I got that right, but if not, I'm highlighting it so the author in their revision can put something there that's similar but um, is, is accurate if that isn't accurate. So then we get to um, exactly what cockroaches the authors use, the researchers here use. And so I'm going to just use their last name. Uh, Latif and Bozgert uh, used um, the Madagascar hissing cockroach. I, I don't think we need during their analysis, right? We just need to know that they used it, used it because of uh, again, I appreciate the author using this, the colon, but we probably don't need the colon here because it's a fairly simple list. So because of its larger size, slope speed, long lifespan, and robustness. And I like to have a comma at the end of a list. So that all looks good. Uh, before the experiment starts, they anesthetized. I think um, I'd just say we could get kind of uh, collapse this into after anesthetizing, hopefully I spelled that right, 
After anesthetizing the cockroaches by cold treatment, we can just go right into that for 45 to 60 minutes. They need to anesthetize them before they attach the electrodes. Um, they attached one side of the electrode, so we can go right into that. So they anesthetize them. After they anesthetize them, then they attach one side of uh, each electrode, maybe one side of the electrodes. I thought maybe it's one side of each electrode. Again, I would double check that detail with the author, but it's, it's, it sounds a little better to say one side of each electrode to the antennas. And I really liked the wording here to serve as electronic rings. I thought that was a nice way of putting it. But in fact, we've already said that in this second paragraph that it delivers these small charges to the rodents, uh, neural, uh, the roaches' neural tissue. So actually, I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, we just need to know that they, after they anesthetized these uh, bugs, they attached the electrodes to the antennas. And we don't need to repeat again that it's delivering these small electrical pulses. Although I like that uh, visual of electronic range. So if there was some way to work that back into maybe the second paragraph, I'd encourage the author to do that. That was some nice language. Now we get, in the next paragraph, we get to the actual test. So they made the device, and then they're testing the device on actual cockroaches. And this is one part where I want some more details. I want to know more about what happened when they actually tested the cockroaches. So uh, I'm going to say, in tests of the system, I'm going to be very explicit and, and let the reader know, hey, this is, so we developed the system. We also tested it. So in tests of the system, cockroaches followed an S-shaped trajectory drawn on the laboratory floor and spent uh, 81 seconds with 100 with 10 percent success rate to complete the route. Now I'm wondering if that's uh, an error. I'm going to push off this last parting thought as and make that into a new paragraph because this test of the system really deserves its own paragraph. Uh, I wonder if that was supposed to be 100 percent 100 percent success rate to complete the route because if it's only a 10 percent success rate, I'm thinking that that's not very good. So I would highlight that and ask the author if that's maybe an error and it was supposed to be 100 percent, or if it's only 10 percent success rate, I'd like to know a little bit more about why they're still enthusiastic about the system. And we need a lot more details here. So what you know, what else did they test? Was that the only test they did? Give me some more details about exactly what happened, how promising the results were, because this is the proof of principle of the device. So we need uh, a lot more details here about that part of the experiment, so I'd ask the author to add that in. And then this last sentence, this will become the concluding paragraph, will lead into the concluding paragraph. So this finding opens the door to scientists to start using insects and biobots. Um, and there's a little bit of grammatical error here uh, in biobots. I might just kind of cut it there, and then it's a new thought that the system's weight is still a problem. So, so this one I, I thought I needed a little bit more setup for because I'm not sure why the weight is still a problem. It seems like a cockroach is pretty small. They have a pretty small device. So why is the weight still a problem? So I feel like we need a little bit more detail about that. We, you could put that in this um, second to last paragraph or maybe start the last paragraph with, you know, this system is still too large because give me the why the, the system needs to be shrunk even further. So further research needs to reduce the weight of the system because I need to know why, because I'm not sure why this isn't already small enough. Uh, and then maybe a but to transition if we're kind of saying that the negative and the drawback and what and, you know the challenges, maybe you need a but there to transition to that final thought that this is something still really cool. But this finding opens the door to scientists to start using insects as biobots. Um, I would say as biobots rather than in biobots. And then you could end there. Maybe it's nice to add one last kind of parting thought here. So uh, I, again, I mentioned that I cut out of that first paragraph the specific reference to the survivor of the earthquake. So maybe we could add something at the end to wrap back to the beginning. Someday armies of cockroaches may be the best hope for rescue, for natural disaster survival survivors or something like that. Natural disaster. So maybe something like that. You know, kind of get some hook back. Someday armies of cockroaches may be the best hope for rescue for natural disaster survivors. So turn it, you know, again, kind of wrap it back to that first thought. Just gives it a nice ending to tie it back to the beginning. 
So now I think it's reading really well. It has a nice setup. We've got a nice introduction that pulls you into the piece. We get an overview of this device without too many technical details. We get a nice paragraph that delivers all the information about the technical details. We get how they actually attach it to the cockroaches. And then uh, we get some information about the first test of the system. That's where I'd like the author to add a little bit more information. And then we get kind of a parting thought and maybe some of the challenges that remain. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.